My hope is that in 10 years, I am not applying a label of autism. Inside Science. Autism is a developmental disorder that makes it difficult for someone to interact with the world. This includes everything from the lights, sounds, and textures around a person to understanding the emotion behind someone else's facial expression. We know from studying genetic changes in humans that there are you know, specific changes that occur in people with, with autism. How do you get from this diverse array of genetic changes to this really complex behavioral disorder that we call autism? And what I'm trying to understand is how that might be funneled through brain circuitry. Your brain has billions of nerve cells, or neurons, that send and receive information all the time. I was trained as an electrophysiologist, so I was trained in my PhD to record the electrical activity of neurons. And there are lots of disorders in neurology where we can point our finger to a particular location in the brain and say, that spot has a scar, therefore you're going to have this specific symptom. We haven't been able to do that with a lot of these disorders like autism. And so it's the perfect opportunity um, for somebody with my training to really make inroads into the causes of these disorders and what's actually going on because the brain has essentially formed normally, but the function is what's missing. Those neurons are there, um, they're all in essentially the right spot, um, but they're not communicating appropriately. And so uh, by recording how neurons communicate, which is electrical signals, I can figure out how that brain formed normally but isn't talking to itself appropriately. Brumbach and her team used mice that had genetic changes like the ones found in autism patients and studied the electrical activity of the neurons in their brains. Certain types of cells are in charge of sending messages from one region of the brain to another. But Brumbach says in autistic mouse brains, the communication cells are not sending signals and not working properly. She wants to find out why. Brumbach hopes that a better understanding of how communication patterns differ in autistic brains can ultimately lead to better treatments. My hope is that if we can understand where in the brain the problems lie, um, which brain cells are not working the same way they are in the typically developing brain, then we can adjust the activity of those particular neurons to alleviate symptoms. Researchers say a lot more research is needed to understand the brain of autistic patients to develop better therapies to help alleviate some symptoms. Inside Science. If you enjoyed this edition, follow us on the web and social media. Powered by the American Institute of Physics and a coalition of underwriters.